Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for the fifth webinar of the series all about our product and their uses organized by the community of practice on ontology of the CDRR big data platform for agriculture and I will let Elizabeth Arnaud the COP leader introduced the webinar series and today's webinar. Hello, thank you, Céline, and welcome to our attendees and our four speakers. This webinar is part of the series about the COP products and their, their uses. And today we welcome the, the team working on the development of SEANT, which is a socioeconomic ontology with a primary objective to help harmonizing the concept used in agricultural household surveys and doing this supporting proper data annotation within repository and databases. Our speakers will be Gideon Kruzman, Foresight and Ex-Ante Research Leader at CIMIT. He is also the leader of the Socioeconomic Community of Practice of the Big Data, and he will introduce the full context, context of the ontology development, followed by Sun Ho Kim, Senior Data Manager at IFPRI. Uh, she will guide us in the content and structure of SEONT, Xing Ji Song uh, is a research associate at the University of Sheffield and he will explain us the use of machine learning technology to build an ontology from extracted concepts from questionnaires. And finally, Berta Miro, postdoctoral fellow at IRI, will explain us the process she adopted to annotate the concept of IRI survey uh, data. So enjoy the webinar. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for the introduction. So now we'll start with Gideon Kruzman. Over to you, Gideon. Yes, I'm really happy that we're having this, uh, this webinar today. And um, I will give a little introduction uh, to, what we, uh, to what, we have been, uh, what we have been doing. Um, the community of practice on socioeconomic data uh, since its inception in 2017 uh, has had a really big focus on um, data interoperability. Uh, basically make a, uh, making the messy uh, socioeconomic data uh, interoperable. Uh, why, uh, why is socioeconomic data messy? Uh, because it's a mixture of structured, semi-structured and unstructured data um, where there is no, uh, no standardization, um, there is um, uh, there are no there were no ontologies, at least not generally accepted ones, um, and, um, and that really makes the interoperability of different data sets uh, uh, very difficult. So what we, what we decided to do is to go for a three-pronged approach. So one part of the approach is to do some standardization where it's possible. Uh, the second one uh, was to provide an ontology of socioeconomic uh, terms uh, that can be linked to uh, the sta uh, standardized, uh, this, uh, uh, all the elements of the standardization. Um, and, at the, and the third uh, component is um, the development of a flexible and extensible uh, metadata schema, uh, which will allow us to, um, uh, to tag data sets with uh, relevant uh, ontology terms in, in such a way uh, that it works in uh, uh, for the kind of really messy socioeconomic data uh, which uh, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, fit into uh, a really rigorous uh, standardized formats and and is not likely to to do so um, any time, uh, anytime soon. So, uh, so the first uh, component is the standardization. Uh, we have a working group uh, named 100Q from 100 Questions, which has been developing uh, standard approaches uh, focused on uh, household surveys, uh, which is a, a major, uh, major component of data collection within the CGIAR. So, uh, so the whole that whole. Um, uh, approach was focused on capturing standard sets of questions related to co standard concepts that can be used for uh, for generating standard indica uh, indicators, but uh, it, as an extensible framework. Uh, so uh, it 
looked at a core set of questions which uh, capture uh, the key elements, but for many things you would need more, uh, more in-depth sets of questions which kind of build up on top, uh, on top of that. Um, the, re uh, the report is available um, uh, within the CG space. Um, the uh, the second uh, the second element were that uh, uh, that we work on is the meta is the metadata schema, uh, with, which has a couple of uh, interesting design principles. So it's platform independent, ontology agnostic, machine readable, human intelligible flexible and extensible. And it basically captures three different types of metadata, descriptive metadata, uh, technical metadata, and structural metadata. The structural metadata is the metadata which actually uh, is needed uh, to have to, for it to be machine readable. And that describes the actual data inside, uh, inside data sets. Um, then uh, the last element uh, of the three-pronged approach uh, is the development of uh, a socioeconomic ontology. Uh, it started out with the socio, uh, socio working group, uh, that was the name, and uh, at some point we changed the name uh, of the ontology into SEANT. A socioeconomic ontology. Um, so the idea was to add ontology terms to socioeconomic data to enhance interoperability uh, with, uh, with a very clear focus on, uh, on 100Q, the uh, looking first at uh, some of the standardized uh, uh, ways of collecting data and uh, ensuring that those standardized forms at least have uh, ontology terms uh, linked to them. Um, and there is the link with uh, the metadata schema in the sense that the metadata schema works, uh, is based on the notion that in order to connect uh, information across, uh, across different data sets, uh, ontology terms are indispensable. Um, Suno Kim of IFPRI has been leading uh, this, uh, this effort and um, uh, the first part of this year uh, we provided a mini grant uh, to the University of Sheffield to develop some machine learning for, uh, for SEANT. Um, Suno will be uh, uh, presenting SEANT uh, uh, in more detail after this and uh, uh, Ching Yi Song of the Sheffield, uh, University of Sheffield will, uh, will uh, explain what he has been doing. Then finally, um, there is the application. The application of uh, the ontology uh, for, uh, for tagging data sets with, uh, with rich metadata. And uh, there is basically two, uh, two places where, uh, where this is being piloted. Uh, at, uh, at CIMIT, the organization that I work for, uh, we've been tagging survey data with rich metadata uh, where the focus is on the metadata schema and basically working then from there towards uh, seeing in terms of, okay, well, what kind of um, uh, ontology terms uh, are we going to be uh, going to be needing within IRI, uh, the International Race Research Institute? Um, they've been tagging uh, survey data with ontology terms very much with a focus on um, uh, uh, on uh, um, uh, getting the ter the right terms into SEAT uh, in order to, uh, to 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 have that information. Uh, uh, tagged cor uh, correctly, and Berta Miro will be uh, will be presenting that um, uh, short uh, shortly. Uh, so, without further ado, I will hand over to Sunho. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Gideon, for the introduction. And so now, Sunho Kim, Senior Data Manager at IFPRI, will guide us through uh, Seant. Hi, my name is Sunho Kim, a Senior Data Manager at IFPRI. Today, I will introduce uh, so socioeconomic ontology. 
um, as Gideon mentioned, this kind of the starting point of the ontology idea was a working group on 100 questions. So 100 question group uh, developed a minimum set of the questions in the standard, standard household survey. So we trying to um, annotate those 100 questions with a standard uh, term, which is uh, um, social economy ontology called SEONT. But we didn't build the ontology from the scratch. Instead of that, the, as the beauty of ontology, we use existing ontology, such as basic formal ontology and CGIR agronomy ontology. And then uh, the purpose of this work is that uh, we would like to annotate existing CGIR um, social economic survey, and then maybe we expand our coverage to uh, external partners as well. The, a few years ago, we start initializing the idea of initializing the social, social economic ontologies. And then after that, we met together in Rome uh, with uh, CGR experts and FAO, World Bank, IFAD, the uh, external expertise as well. And we discussed what is the minimum set of questions we need to put on the social economic um, agricultural survey. Uh, after that uh, output from the workshop, and then we uh, develop, we start thinking about developing the Seont ontology. So at IFRI, the Maria Angeli from Bioversity and Elizabeth from Bioversity, and then some of the expertise in at IFRI, we set up together and they discuss how we build ontology together. After the workshop, we released the first draft of the Seont on the GitHub. After that, we're trying to think about a new use case of using this ontology. So Iri, the Berta, who going to be present our work later. So we set up some uh, virtual workshop because of the COVID-19. And then we have several days the discussion on uh, how we using the social economic ontology to Iri survey. And then we did some significant work together. So after that, um, as Gideon mentioned, uh, we need we have uh, some <clears throat> tools to uh, tag or extract uh, keyword from the question questions because the question is very long and then we don't have much uh, human labor for that. So the based on the the support of the social economic data COP, we had a very small money uh, to build the machine learning algorithm with the universe Sheffield. Jim is going to be uh, discussing more later. Um, we have some gift from existing the community of the ontologies. So there's a lot of uh, all existing ontologies such as information arch artifact ontology, informed consent ontology, and even food on and relationship ontology as well. So those 13 um, ontology which is already developed, uh, we using this ontology for developing the, our social economic ontology seven. Numbers in Seons, we have, I have um, focus of five things, 1,022 axiom in the ontology and 280 classes, five, nine object property and seven data properties. So this uh, now six slide, I just quickly show what is the model on the 100 questions and how we implement in the uh, ontology. The first model is the household composition and characteristics. So we include a uh, household age, sex, and main occupation and education level and others. And then the rep, uh, right side is a screenshot how to implement in the uh, protege. And then the, the other um, model is a farm characteristic. We cover land available and usage. And also we cover livestock and fishes. Um, as you may know, the ontology COP, we plan to develop livestock and fish ontology as well. Next model is the income and asset. So we cover the farm income and also we have off farm income together, including the remittance as well. And then also we add some asset um, the concept there. And another important part of uh, model is gender. The Gideon also working with the gender initiative in uh, CGIR. So we work together to add the more gender uh, related concept into there. So uh, we also add some of empowerment in index as well. 
uh, the food security and dietary diversity uh, indicator, which is very uh, popular and like a fees of uh, food insecurity expense scale. Uh, those are in the ontology as well. And they also we include the extension service and the innovations part. So those are like quick overview of what we have on the ontology. Now, I would like to share my experience during the building the ontology um, with you. So you can learn something from the, my um, small experience. The first thing is that uh, OVO Foundries. OVO Foundry is open biology, biological and biomedical ontology, ontology the domain. They create the best practice how to build ontology in a specific domain. I think this is a good idea to adapt those best practice into our domain, agriculture and the social economic domain as well. So at the beginning, it's a sharp learning curve. So it's hard to understand the like a abstract hub, uh, upper level basic formal ontologies. But it takes time at the beginning, but at the end, there are some fruit. So later we can save our, our time and then our cost to implement the good ontology uh, using existing the um, over boundary ontologies. And then they already have an over boundary uh, principle. So we can adapt their principle, they, okay, they automatically check our ontology. And one of the things I, will, I learned from this practice is that uh, we don't have to build relation. Relation means that we have some, con uh, we have some uh, um, link from the one concept to the other. So normally using the two different uh, prop, um, the property is object properties and data properties. The good thing is that in OVO Foundry, they already build the relation ontology, which cover most of the existing relations. So if you don't have, if you have a specific uh, relation, you can add in more, but 600 not the number show that it has the most existing um, relations. So we can adapt it as well. And then also the over boundary provides some tools, the called ontology development kit or ontofax. So those tools we can use it easily. So it helps us to develop the ontology. And then I also introduced some of the tools which I use. The first one is a protege, is ontology editor. And the second one is ontology development kit called ODK. In social economic domain, we using this term ODK as a, a survey tool. Um, but it um, on co coincidentally they use the same term, so I am very happy. Um, at, when I start using the ODK in the uh, ontology um, the area ontology domain, at the beginning it's very difficult because I I made some parameter every time and very hard to adjust. Sometimes there's some error message, but now there's another version, the new version from the ODK, which is based on Docker image. So if you set up the server in, in the cloud, and then you can download the, the Docker images, and then you can easily run uh, your ontology building using Docker from GitHub. And another tool I use uh, as in the ontology is a local structure. So we can use the uh, regional to see if my ontology is correct or not. So I normally I use the palette regionals, but this is ha help us to um, verify our ontology is, is correct on the logical way. The another tool is the information extraction um, tools. Um, I found that 2017, there's a paper about information extraction tools. There's a lot of tools outside. But the issue is that we using the social economic uh, survey, which is normally using the Excel form to create the survey using the ODK. ODK means a uh, uh, KP tool, um, and then a uh, survey to and other tool. So normally it's Excel or the XML format, but it's very hard to use the existing tool to apply in our domain. That's why we're trying to um, have some uh, our own tool from um, the, our domain. So next step is that we trying to publish. We are going to be publish our ontology to ontology lookup service, which is a user can easily retrieve the or browse ontology term. So we, it provides the easy access to ontology term itself, and then we can also get some feedback from the users. And also we are trying to expand our coverage to other surveys using the machine learning term, the machine learning tool which the Zini developed. And there was so we work with the CGR Center and partner more, uh, such as the uh, global gaps. 
So I highly encourage to you be a partner of the Seon Ontology. So you can get the Seon to Ontology from the GitHub right now. And then you can also, if you have any feedback or any kind of the survey which you want to include in our ontology, you can send to us. And also you can visit our ontology, uh, community of practice uh, pages through the scan the QR code. So next speaker is a machine learning approach by uh, Jing Li Song. Thank you very much, uh, Suno, for this uh, presentation of Seant and uh, your experience. So now, uh, Singzi Song from the University of Sheffield, research associate in natural language processing, will talk about machine learning approach. Over to you, Singzi. Okay, thank you. So um, I'm going to talk about um, the machine learning approach to extract the keyword from surveys. And the, um, normally we talk about machine learning. We need a set of training data. Um, this training data normally like uh, annotated with what is important, what is keyword in the, in the questions. But the problem is we don't have any of this data. So um, of course we can start draft uh, annotation guideline and uh, hire a bunch of annotator and that's cost probably several months and you do some, the, some kind of data cleaning and uh, you have your training data, but that is very time consuming and uh, cost quite high. Um, so instead of that, we are trying to build the machine learning uh, system uh, from zero data, from no data. So basically I will uh, talk about the, the techniques um, we were used in this project. Uh, these include uh, we use pre-trained uh, model, including word embedding and language models, and transfer learning and fine tune. So just to give you some general idea of uh, what these terminology are, the pre-trained model is something like um, a general knowledge. It's uh, for in, in the human point of view, that uh, it's kind of your, the, the knowledge you learned from school, learned from the overall, overall uh, world, surrounding world. Um, and then <clears throat> transfer learning normally refer to a certain domain. It's kind of domain knowledge. For example, in the du music domain, you want to play, uh, your task is play a, a viola and you don't have a viola and no one can teach you. And in this case, uh, probably you have friends or your family have someone have violin. You can practice violin and uh, you can transfer this knowledge to play viola because there are some similarity between them. And uh, the last term fine tune is finally you got uh, a viola and uh, I have someone to teach you. You can practice and uh, fine tune your knowledge from violin to viola. This is the general concept. So the general knowledge of, of NLP in the natural language processing, um, here is some kind of example of, of word embedding. Um, this is a famous, this is kind of famous um, equation introduced in 2003. And uh, it kind of breaks through in machine learning or NLP. That means um, machine, learning, uh, machine learning able to do some kind of word level reasoning. Okay, to achieve this, basically we need convert a word into a numeric representation. And these numbers uh, represent uh, as a kind of meaning of this word. So um, to train this, we input a word and, and uh, here is a model. Normally this model is a neural network and you predict the surrounding words. So you can use any context to train this kind of word embedding, even uh, the context in this slide. Um, so in this case, similar uh, context, the word with similar context tends to have similar uh, numerical representation and they have kind of similar meaning. Like God save the king, if there is king, God save the queen, there is queen. You see, um, it will get exactly the same if you, same numerical representation if you only train on these two. So now I just uh, give you kind of a uh, visualization of um, the, how the word vector looks like in um, 3D uh, vector space. Oh, no, uh, that, that, 
Okay. So um, I highlight the, the word with economic and each word is a, is a, each dot is a word in, a, in this 3D uh, space. And these yellow dots are the 100 most related words to our highlighted word economic. Um, I mean, related means they have the smallest distance, Euclidean distance. So you can see economics, wealth, um, and uh, all this democracy, all these kind of things, these are most related to economic. This also means they have most similar context uh, to economic. So once we have this vector, it's kind of uh, coordinate in, in, the, in the vector space, we just do some simple math, like vector of king minus vector of man plus vector of woman, you will magically land it to uh, the vector of queen. So you can do all sorts of things like walking minus walked plus swarm equal to swing, a span uh, minus Madrid plus Rome you land to Italy. So once we have this, all this um, numeric representation or meaning representation of the word, um, we can uh, build the sentence or in our case, a question level uh, uh, representation by like simplest way is average all the vectors from, from the word. But there's also uh, one thing uh, to notice is not every word contributes like samely important uh, information when conveying information to the human. For example, God save the queen, if we remove the, you still get general meaning of this sentence. So um, basically to adapt this, we need to add kind of weight vector. It's a weighted average, not just average. So this weights, normally we call it attention, attention mechanism. So to try or get the weights for each word, we normally need a kind of downstream task. Um, the downstream task is something like, like this. So there is a question and you want to classify this question to uh, certain categories. In our case, this uh, question belongs to a location, talking about location and uh, related to the state. Okay. Um, so these are the question, uh, these tasks are used in the question answering task. It's not for our task, not for the um, Sion's task. But uh, you can see them, there are some kind of relationship because uh, like they are questions. So basically this uh, kind of question served as a violin in our case. So basically we train the way if we want to get uh, our, if we have a classifier there to correct classify this sentence, we have to get higher weights for states like Chesapeake Bay, okay? So once we have trained these weights, we can apply the model without the end task classification. Um, we only need the weights to extract the keywords, what's the, the most important words, most attentional words uh, in, the, in the survey question. For example, here, here is a real example. So this is a real input and this is a real output. Um, so which crops did you irrigate during the last 12 months? And uh, the most important words from previous trained um, model, you will get crops, irrigate, and last. So uh, basically, we don't have any training instances, but we can directly use this model uh, to, to the survey questions. So um, basically, we can use this kind of extract keyword to, to searching and mapping to existing ontologies. So once we have this mapping, now we have our in-domain data, our viola finally coming. We can fine tune uh, the model based on the um, ontology class and makes our model like, have better performance in the future, okay? So this is uh, all, the, all about the machine learning approach. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stingy, for this uh, clear presentation of uh, machine learning. And now, Beta Miro, postdoctoral fellow at IRI, will talk about our user experience annotating survey data with ontologies. Over to you, Berta. 
Hi everyone, this is Bert and today I'll talk about my experience annotating survey data with Seont from the domain expert side. The objective of this exercise was to get some surveys annotated and also to give some feedback to Seont on the ontologies and the terms. So we chose two surveys for that. One was with a broader scope and the other one had more specific scope. And both of them had some similar terms and also some differences between them. And these same surveys were also sent for the machine learning exercise. This example survey is the broader one and it had modules similar to the 100 questions like uh, household information, farming characteristics, assets, farm management like input and cultivation practices, income, expenditure and other socioeconomic data. So to proceed with the term annotation, we developed a workflow and the first step was to fill up an Excel template with the following fields. So there was the survey term as it was written in the survey and in this example was occupation specific primary. Then the description of the term which I got from the survey, the explanation that was provided to the interviewers. Then there was a reference for the description which I didn't have for this example or actually for most of the examples. And then the drop down options offered to the respondents and each of these options also has to be annotated with an ontology term, not only the main term. The next step in the annotation workflow was to search for the survey term in the Seont using Protege as someone who has showed before and that was to visualize the ontology. And then for example, if we search for occupation specific primary, I wrote occupation in the search box and for example, if you notice here under occupation, there are some options, which is what I meant before about annotating each dropdown options for the term. Continuing with the workflow, when we find the term, we check that we are happy with the definition and then we annotate the ontology source, the term as it is displayed in the ontology, the specific ID, IRI and context of use. This will help later to check for consistency between the surveys. Also, if we have any comments about the term, we write them. For example, in this term example in particular, I could say that uh, I could annotate uh, the occupation, but it doesn't really specify whether it's primary occupation or secondary occupation. If the term is not in Seon, we can check in OLS or Agrobok and then repeat the same annotation steps uh, explained before. So basically, if we don't find the term, we can always ask Seont after checking all the sources. But uh, now I'll explain a little bit more about the user experience. And uh, here is a bit of the summary, like um, overall positive, because I could annotate 50% of the terms from the two example surveys. And I used uh, Seont and OLS. I really did not get into the agrobook. Then uh, about the annotation process using Protege and OLS. I thought it's uh, a bit time consuming. Also, I had to take time to get familiarized with the software and the ontologies in general and the way they are structured. And I noticed that I took less time with the second survey annotation than what I had taken with the first one. Also, with the first and second survey, I noticed that uh, some of my choices between terms were different. So it gave me the feeling of being a bit subjective, maybe because I'm not too familiar with the ontology terms themselves. And I think both the time consuming and the subjectivity, this will improve with the machine learning actually. Also, there are some terms that uh, they are a bit ambiguous the way we use them. And from the socioeconomic community of practice, we'll probably have to work on them and agree on the use and definition. And some of them are mentioned here, like parcel and plot, season, etc. And sure, more will be appearing as we keep processing more surveys. Also, if we have to use different ontology sources, we have to check for the terminology that uh, is compatible between the different ontologies. This is something that the team told me, and I really don't think I have the expertise to do, so we'll need some help here. And then this is the final slide and here just some suggestions for what the next steps should be. 
For example, one of the questions was like, what would you like to see next in SEONT? And I think uh, it would be good to have some more domain experts to validate SEONT and uh, also the workflow that I presented and identify common gaps that we are all interested in and then probably request for this to be included in SEONT first. Then it would be good to find some references for the definitions. This was a real challenge for me, but maybe other groups have uh, definitions or, or the references more clear. Also, as I mentioned before, also we need to agree on the sum of the definitions for these uh, terms that we use in different contexts sometimes. And also we, we should find a way to report to SEONT like in Excel or maybe GitHub or another system when we want to include that term or something that is uh, easy to, to use for everyone. And then finally, just to mention that all the documentation and annotations, they are uh, through the SharePoint of the ontologies, they are available. And I'd like to thank uh, Sungho, Marie Angelique and Elizabeth for helping this process because I didn't do that alone. And also thank you all of you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Berta, for sharing your uh, user experience uh, with us. So we are now at our question and answer session. So I can see that Nilam, you, you have a, a first question. Thank you, Celine. My question is about uh, during the research process, um, when do we start adopting ontology, ontology? Is it during the questionnaire design or during data entry or during data sharing phase? Do you have any suggestions? Uh, let, me, let, let me start off and then uh, the other panelists can, uh, uh, can jump all over me and tell me I'm completely wrong. Um, so, um, uh, we use we use the ontology terms, uh, to tag data with structural metadata, uh, so that data sets become interoperable. Um, but, uh, which me which uh, which basically already tells you that where it really is important is when you are curating your data and. Uh, and creating a metadata, a metadata uh, uh, connected to your, to your data sets. Having said that, you can also start moving the process back, uh, back towards all the way to, uh, to the design of your, um, uh, of your uh, survey, survey instruments, uh, already incorporating uh, the notion, uh, the notion of the ontology terms and their definitions to ensure that uh, when you have the choice of asking things in a certain way, that you choose something which is already um, aligned with certain types of standards. Uh, obviously, in socioeconomic data, there is about as many definitions as um, as there is the use of uh, of terms, and that is not going to go away. But um, uh, the idea behind 100Q and, and linking that to uh, to ontology terms um, is that where it is possible to standardize, you can you can do so. So this is where it actually makes sense to go to use your ontology terms at the beginning of your research process in order to, um, uh, to create uh, in, uh, survey instruments that are ontology ready. Thank you, Gideon, for your answer. Uh, Suno, Tsingzi, Beta, do you, you have um, anything to add? No, from my side. Okay. The Gideon answer is perfect. <laughs> yeah, if I, if I want to say, I actually agree with Gideon. And uh, for me, what uh, the way I look at it is that if I were to start a survey, I would start with ontology terms to make the most use of it. Because now I'm on a kind of rescue mode of all my surveys to see which are the ones that I can use the most. So which questions can I standardize or not for the interoperability part? 
Um, in that sense, um, um, so basically we need to start with the questions, right? Basically standardizing the questions. So, so that led me to another questions because um, uh, long back, um, Mary Angelique and myself, we tried to uh, standardize um, uh, one of our survey with the, with, the, with the ontology terms and it was quite a time taking exercise for us. So uh, I think just for one survey and for one module, we spent like one and a half hour. So that leads me to think about how do we convince and train researchers in documenting their data with ontology terms or even using or, or, or adopting standard questions. Um, so, um, um, you know, like um, it, it will definitely involve sensitizing researchers and then how do we get their buy-ins and all those kind of thing. Um, can I ask, answer the question? Um, the, I think the, that's why we, because uh, I, we had the same experience on our side as well. So that's why we try to develop some, some tool for researchers. We cannot ask researchers to take the, all the time to uh, make, put the, the uh, tag their question to ontology because it's, it's a really time consuming job, which Nila mentioned. So I think the, we have some technology available outside. So we do some natural language processing, machine learning, what Jing, uh, Jingli does for us. I think those kind of tools and not, the, this is kind of uh, the first stage, but if we improve those tools a lot, then we can, we can maybe e easily uh, researchers to put the, the questions to uh, maybe we can download the OTX um, file and then send it to the tool and then tool get back all kind of relative ontology term to the researchers. So sometimes there's one term, sometimes several term. So in that case, maybe this researcher might be choose like three or one of them. If that would be another solution for that. So I hopefully we can keep developing this tool for the researchers. Do you want to add some comment on that? No, I agree. I agree with you there. And this, this is, um, um, there is a bit of a, um, uh, a learning curve in that, um, um, uh, for us as, a, as a community. So, um, initially it will be a lot of work, uh, uh tagging, tagging your data sets was on top, uh, was ontology terms. Um, uh, and, um, that uh, that will that will that will definitely uh, uh, take uh, take time, um, and um, yeah, you need to have some um, some incentives in place uh, for uh, for uh, for scientists or uh, data managers uh, to do so. Um, and then uh, in this uh, the second part is one, once you have annotated a number of question uh, questionnaires. With uh, with ontology terms, you can then start using that to train uh, to train uh, the machine learning algorithms, so that you know uh, if you if you feed a questionnaire to the uh, uh, to to the machine learning algorithm, it will uh, where it where it can identify the ontology term linked to uh, to a question uh, make that uh, that suggestions and sometimes it will you know it will be um, uh, a, a, a very uh, a very clear choice where it says well we, I think it's about a 99 percent chance that uh, that I as a machine learning algorithm uh, have got it right. Uh, and you can basically de uh, design, uh, identify um, your cutoff points where you say, okay, uh, I'm pretty confident in this, uh, in this algorithm, so I put it at, let's say, 75%. Uh, if, the, if, the, if the machine learning algorithm uh, is 75% sure of the, the term, I will use it. If not, then I will have a, uh, I will do it. Uh, I will do it manually. I will check their suggestion and um, uh, and um, and um, uh, cr make a manual correction um, uh, if ne if necessary. Which then will uh, will help to uh, to inform the machine learning algorithm of how it uh, uh, how it should uh, should perform. And so you get this kind of uh, self learning. Uh, self-learning mechanism in play. And, and over time, um, 
it will become better uh, 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 at this uh, at this game. And at a certain moment, yeah, you you, you feed your questionnaire to uh, uh, to the algorithm, and it will be pretty good at uh, identifying the ter uh, the terms that that are uh, that are in there. But that's that's the long game. And uh, in order to get to that point, we we need to tag. Uh, a whole bunch of surveys manually. If I may, um, Elizabeth, uh, you just finished by my question. <laughs> In fact, I was I wanted to stress that uh, the algorithm will work better, uh, of course, if we get more and more uh, surveys to to process uh, for to help Singji to refine the algorithm. So. I don't know Nilam or anyone uh, connected if you are interested to to help us um, with this exercise you could uh, um, adopt the process of Berta first and tag some of the of your survey and send that to to Sunhu and Sinji and they could uh, use that as train uh, data sets for example train questionnaires yes uh, Elizabeth um, the we do have um, uh, limited time given the staff in our uh, uh, division, but uh, uh, definitely we will try to um, annotate um, at least one survey. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nilan. Yes, hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks a lot for the uh, stimulating discussion. Um, I, I have a follow-up question, which is probably related to the previous two questions. 100 Q questions, are they already in a, in a format that we normally use for uh, survey design, for example, ODK, that is the Open Data Kit, or the Survey CTO? Because for me, I think it is, uh, yeah, it, for it to become more usable for, for, for data managers and scientists, we have to start from a standardized set of questions that are already annotated and then one can now start to cherry pick from those other questions and you know try to modify but at least you have a base where you're starting from rather than the uh first you know designing your own questionnaire and then trying now to adopt it to uh let's say annotated uh, uh language so that, that's 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 my question yeah well uh that's a very good question thank you thank you brian um um, Mark van Wijk, who, uh, who is, uh, who's leading uh, the Roma's work, um, who's been heavily involved in the 100Q. And um, he was in the process of um, incorporating the 100Q into um, uh, the, uh, the Romus uh, uh, tool, uh, toolbox. And that is ODK. And um, so that sh um, uh, those that should be that should be uh, uh, available at some at some point. I, I would need to check with Mark for uh, for uh, for that. I, I will do so and copy you in uh, on that uh, on, in that process. And once we uh, if we have it if if it is available, we will make it available uh, through the community of practice on social. Um, with respect to other um, uh, other um, CAPI uh, solution, um, we could. Yeah, it's definitely if someone is uh, is willing to uh, uh, to develop uh, uh, develop the the one uh, the one hundred Q in uh, into uh, into for instance survey CTO or survey solutions or whatever uh, that would be that would be great and uh, we would be happy to uh, to su uh, uh, to support that uh, with uh, with uh, with our own work uh, in terms of uh, adding the ontology terms uh, where uh, where needed etc uh, in order to uh, ensure that uh, that it be uh, it becomes usable and look at the ways of um, extracting the information from um, uh, from this uh, from this uh, this uh, the CAPI solution directly into um, a, into a, a, meta, a metadata uh, uh, format uh, the, that would make 
that data that uses that, uh, that approach um, uh, inter uh, interoperable from the get-go. Thanks. Um, Meda, would you like to maybe add to the discussion with your question on the 100 uh, Q? Yeah, hi everybody. Um, I think at least a few of you know about uh, the Agronomy Field Information Management System, which is an effort to collect data in from agronomic trials that is already uh, conformant or already um, tagged or tied to ontology concepts. And so you're already generating when you when you collect the data, it's already tied to the to that particular concept. And what I'm wondering, and this ties into what we've been talking about in the last 10 minutes or so um, is is building on what you just said, Gideon. Um, you know, the, the, I wonder if you could actually do something similar now that you have a, sort of a draft sound and you have the 100 Q. Um, I should also mention as an aside that, that we're, we're probably going to be talking with Mark van Veek as well because I've had some early exchanges with him uh, because there's much more interest now in picking up some a few socioeconomic profitability, particularly related um, uh, uh, data from agronomic experiments, as well as a few other things. And so, you know, we, we're building out a kind of a survey module uh, as part of agrofoods, potentially. We're still sort of trying to, to, to judge whether, you know, how to go about that. But this ties in very well with what you're doing, of course. And, and so the question is, do you see, um, you know, taking the, the 100 questions and some of Mark's modules um, and, and tying them with SEONT already de facto and then sort of being able to push that into ODK because that path is something we'll be developing through AgroFIMS. I'm just wondering, you know, whether that's something you see coming down the pike because that'll en enable people to go out in the field and collect, when they collect their data, it's already kind of standardized, at least, you know, maybe you could get to 75 or 80% of it is already um, interoperable from the get-go. So what's your feeling about that? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's the way, that's, uh, that's the, the idea the behind, behind the whole process is that uh, even though it, it's, uh, it's, a bit of, uh, it's a bit of work um, uh, now, uh, at a certain moment, it's really going to make your life so much easier uh, in the sense that, you know, you, ha you, uh, uh, you know that you haven't missed out stuff because you've used a, stand a standardized, a standardized uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, formats. Um, uh, the data that you collect, uh, even if you're, if you're using uh, a very specific way of asking the question because of the context, uh, it, is a, it is linked to a specific, um, a, specific, uh, a specific ontology term. So the information that, you, uh, that you've collected is already, uh, is already interoperable from, uh, from the get-go. And you don't need to, uh, somebody uh, uh, after the fact doesn't have to go and look at the question and decide, okay, well, what does this actu uh, did, uh, did this actually mean? Because it's very often that the, it's uh, the way that a question is framed um, is very context specific, even though what you're asking uh, is fairly, uh, fairly, uh, fairly general. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, absolutely. The, the, that, that is, that is what it's all about, what it's all about. Um, and then um, uh, you also asked uh, another question, Meta, around, uh, around how the linkage between uh, between uh, uh, the CG core metadata and um, and Seant and OIMS and how that you know how that kind of things fit together and uh, does that have implications for CG core? Um, actually, it doesn't have any uh, uh, implications for CG core because CG core is uh, um, uh, a, a metadata scheme uh, a metadata uh, schema in the sense of uh, uh, of, ter uh, of terms within the metadata schema, which are about the description of whole data sets, um, where uh, where SEANT is very much about the structural metadata of uh, the data inside the data sets, and so describing the data files in uh, great detail. 
What OIMS does is basically provide at a very high level a way of um, of collecting all that kind of, uh, uh, all that kind of information uh, in a way that um, that it you know uh, you collect all the that type of the structural the um, the descriptive and the technical uh, technical metadata uh, in a way that um, yeah is uh, uh, is um, is very flexible and it is not dependent on the kind of platform that you're uh, that you're using using but it basically keeps all that information so the whole cg core actually fits into uh, in, uh, in, into into oims uh, just like any other kind of metadata schema uh, fits into uh, in, uh, into oims uh, it be, uh, and it's uh, and if you want uh, if you want to expand something doesn't matter it'll fit into OIMS. Uh, it, uh, the the idea is is that you do it in such a way that uh, in principle um, it becomes machine readable. Uh, for it to be machine readable, somebody has to uh, has to write a script to uh, 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 to to get the the information out. But it is so structured that. In principle, you know, you can you you can do it. There is no there is no way of uh, uh, of running into things that oh no this cannot be done. Well, thank you, Gideon, for answering this question. Um, Elizabeth, you have a question for Bert Berta. Yeah, thank you, Celine. Uh, Berta, you you mentioned during your presentation that the selection of a term is very subjective because sometimes you you have several possible solutions or your perception of the question is uh, specific. And I was, I was wondering if you could have time to document your selection. Why did you did the, the selection of a specific term? Yeah, this, uh, what I realized is that it was very subjective in the sense that it was uh, I don't know how to document it because I was basing it on my understanding of the survey term from my side. And then I was looking at the description that was provided. And then I was looking at the options that they were included in both my question and in the survey. I can't really document it. It was really subjective. Mm -hmm. And the only confirmation that I had was that when I did the second survey, some of them were most of them were matching. So basically I understood that I was following uh, a criteria that was um, more or less the same, but um, I don't see how I can document that. Okay, as long as you are consistent in the way you annotate your data over several surveys, I think it makes sense. And as long as we know it's you who did the annotation, uh, so we can link in a way your hidden criteria to, to you and understand after come back to you to understand better why, what was the perception of, of the term. And yes. I have another question for you, Berta. It's, uh, you mentioned that uh, you would like to have an easy way of um, providing feedback on Seance. Uh, so you're, you're, you think that the use of uh, GitHub and creation of issues uh, is not an easy way for somebody who is not really acquainted with the GitHub. What would you suggest as simplified process? Yes, yeah, so basically I think if it's a data manager, GitHub is not an issue. But if it is more on the social sciences part, I think it's already um, a learning curve to use Protege or any other software for looking at ontologies. So you already want to get familiar with the ontology part. And then um, I, don't, I really don't know what's the familiarity with GitHub. For me, um, I could manage in as long as it's a, some sort of a form. But I'd like to, to spend the time looking at the ontology and the terms, not at the, the reporting part. Okay. But I don't know what's the level around also, who would be doing it and maybe it's, it's just very personal. In fact, um, when you are a scientist, you are not supposed to check the ontology under protege unless you're very interested to see that. Uh, otherwise, once uh, Sun Ho indicated that once Seant is published on the Obo Foundry site, so it's an official publication. 
then the ontology lookup service of, of ABI will index it. And then it will be an easy way of searching for your terms. Uh, so you don't have to go through the, the, tree, the structure of the, the ontologies uh, per se. And the other point I want to raise is, uh, we, I know that uh, most of the scientists are not very acquainted uh, in creating issues directly on GitHub. It's not their tool, it's more the tool of the developers. And then uh, for the crop ontology, for example, we developed a term submission form. And this is uh, quite easy to use. And um, if, if we feel it's needed also for Seont, we could have a, a similar form created for Seont. And the idea is the form is online. So it asks the name of the submitter and it guides you in the structure of the term you want to submit and it will automatically create the issue for you on the GitHub repository. So you don't have to just uh, take care of that issue. It will be done as soon as you submit your form. So I think we could also think about using uh, the, the form we have for the crop ontology is open, the code is open, so it could be possible to, to develop it for Seant as well. Yes, from my side, I think that will be really useful. Okay, I take note. Hi, this is Frida, but I work for the Alliance of SEAD and Biodiversity International. Some time back, uh, Leroy mentioned to me about the Sion and I tried to access it. I wasn't able to get even the prototype. So I was just, uh, I was just, you know, writing a question to ask first, how can I access it? And I'm not sure if it's the same that has been uh, developed further, but there was a prototype initially on GitHub that there was a, a GitHub page for it. Maybe it's a different one, still under socioeconomic uh, ontologies. And I tried to access it and um, wrote an email back and forth, and I was told it would be uploaded soon, but it was never really uploaded. So I was really asking if if it's been, how can I access it or how can we use it? When maybe within CG initially, I'm not sure, but I was just curious to see the C on how, how I can have access to it. Thank you. Maybe I can an answer the question. So uh, the first of all, thanks so much for your question. I'm very happy to, to somebody try to access the GitHub. This is nice to hear. Um, yes, yeah, so we, we initially the the name was ontology was sci, uh, so sci, um, social, so SCIO, but now it's uh, changed the sound, so that's why we changed the GitHub URL as well. So um, if you, uh, I can share my, um, I can share my slide, and then also I can, uh, if you share your email through the chat window, I can uh, definitely send the ontology to you, so you can uh, just to, um, um, the uh, browse it and then maybe if you want to we can have uh, some small uh, meeting so I can explain how to use the uh, seon and how to um, if we have any comment and then we can discuss together so I'm happy to uh, sub assist you to access the uh, seon thank you so please type, yeah, type the, your email on the chat window thank you so much Okay, hi. Um, let me let me add something to there. So um, um, uh, it's really good to have more people involved in the process of of uh, of developing further developing sound uh, and uh, through the, uh, as part of the whole formal ontology development process. And that is what Sunho will uh, will be doing. Um, now, um, uh, Sunu is going to clobber me over the head. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, of that. But there is another. Uh, there is another aspect to this, and that is uh, the use of um, uh, of the ontology terms by uh, scientists and data managers, etc., uh, in a way that makes sense to them which um, may not be the same as the way that you do it through a formal, uh, uh, the formal uh, uh, ontology, because that has to be completely consistent. Whereas um, for the, the use, uh, the easy use by scientists and research uh, uh, associates, um, 
and data managers, it's, uh, 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 you may want to have some other tools as well in order to find, uh, uh, to, to be able to annotate your data with ontology terms or the other way around to use ontology, uh, uh, to start using ontology ter uh, terms at, from the get-go when designing, uh, designing uh, survey instruments. Um, in that case, you know, um, uh, using an ontology lookup service or um, or even going into an ontology itself uh, is going to be uh, a kind of overkill and somebody may try it but they'll they say oh this is not for me and they will stop uh, stop using it whereas if we can do something on the sidelines where um, uh, we use let's say some of the some of the uh, the surveys that we that we uh, that we annotate um, uh, and uh, uh, and create let's say a PDF file which has the questions the quest uh, the questions in there and then uh, attach the uh, the relevant ontology terms to it. Now somebody is going to go and uh, wants to design. Uh, design a survey and he has a there is a but there's a bunch of PDF files available of surveys where uh, that have already been annotated and they can go through and see oh yeah this question okay that's that ontology term and now I know uh, in the ontology lookup service I can uh, you know type in that that term and uh, and get uh, get more the more information or even we could, you know, we could even do it uh, uh, where uh, where you have it as, as an, uh, in the appendix of that uh, that PDF file, that document uh, where you have all the ontology terms uh, that you that were mentioned in the uh, in the quest uh, in the quest uh, the questionnaire, and then all the ontology the for the the the, the, the formal definitions at the, at the uh, at the end uh, in alphabetical order so they were relatively easy to find so that way it you know it becomes something that is useful for uh for scientists uh to to use without having to understand the complete formal ontology uh, as is but have something okay this is the way that i actually can use uh, can use it just some foods for thought just to follow on uh to what gideon just said um I don't know how many of you, I don't know who's there because I can't see, but, but if you're familiar with Guardian, we will, at the end of this month, well, we're almost there, um, early in August, be releasing uh, uh, FAIR workflows through Guardian so that you can, you can step through and take, you know, at the repository level, uh, the about data set metadata, which is the CG core, conforms to the CG core. Um, and then through the same workflow, you know, it's a sort of a staged workflow. You choose your license as part of the, um, the metadata annotation with the CG core, but then you can also um, upload and annotate your, your data set itself, um, the, the variables, the data variables um, with ontology terms without knowing necessarily anything about the ontology particularly because every, uh, you know, we're using a tool, we've built in a tool called COPO that allows you to do this. Um, that was developed by colleagues at, um, the, the, at Norwich University in the UK. And so this is um, something that makes it very easy for people to do it. The idea is don't force people whose primary business is not to be ontology experts, don't force them to become ontology experts in order to annotate a data, a data set well. You know, let, let, let us give them the tools um, the, in hand to do this easily. And this is our um, sort of attempt to do that. So I think once SEANT goes in, you know, is available through OboFoundry and uh, the, uh, these other outlets, essentially, COPO will, it will show up in COPO so that when you click on a, on a particular question, and we have to figure out how this works, but I think we can work with the SEANT team to quite easily do that. Um, so that th this will make it very easy to, for, anybody, whether it's a data manager, an ontology expert, or a, or a researcher even, to annotate, uh, pick the best term, because each term that, that pops up uh, as, as a possibility comes with a description, and you choose which, which best matches um, your data variable, essentially, or your question in this case. Um, so, so just to let you know that that's um, in the works and due to be coming on pretty soon for anybody to use. Um, 
And then my question was for Berta, because, because Berta, you said that a seant worked for about 50% of the concepts that you tested um, or that you tried to annotate. I'm curious about where it did not work. So were there sort of certain modules or certain areas um, that where, where it didn't work? I mean, I, I assume that this is the kind of feedback that the SEONT team can, can use to then build even further. Yes, I, it was certain modules that uh, we had very developed. Basically, it was, I remember, labor specially and mostly inputs. Um, inputs in, in uh, economic terms, things like that. And I did pass the feedback, but one of the things that uh, at least I would envision is that maybe this is specific. So I was uh, really looking forward to other teams to bring like uh, what modules they are interested in and get the priorities basically. Start with the priorities so most users can benefit. But I did feedback about my gaps, yes. Maria and I uh, worked together to find out which term is goes to um, the ergonomic ontology or which term goes to social economic because uh, some of the um, which from the uh, Berta survey was uh, not clear what domain in up to. Okay, I think I got that. Thank you. Um, and I think that that pro that problem or that issue will will be, be you know will will run head on into it um, as we go forward with agrofims now because there will be more sort of socioeconomic questions with socioeconomic bent. You know, so so I think at some point I'll probably want to set up a, a you know we'll, we'll do a little tiny proof of concept is the idea um, and see where we want to go with this and then maybe we touch sort of touch your team and, and let you know what, where we're headed and what we're doing. Um, because I'm, I'm fairly certain it's not stepping on your toes, but it, it, it will be good to make sure that we're not duplicating efforts and that, you know, everybody benefits from anything that, that one team does. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. Great, yes, I totally agree as well. <laughs> uh, and so, um, Elizabeth uh, has a question for Stingji. Uh, I had the last question for Xingji, who is the, the most uh, technical person in this uh, uh, group uh, for the machine learning. Um, I wanted just to know um, uh, how far the manual uh, mapping that Berta, Berta done, has done, uh, mapping the terms to ontology, has uh, helped you uh, refining your uh, your weight uh, on the terms and how, how it had, has uh, helped you to improve the mapping of questions to ontology terms. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, about um, how far it's, um, unless we have a kind of golden standard, um, like evaluation set, uh, but I can't, I can't give you a number how far um, uh, this helped. But um, just for just for a personal feeling, um, yes, this definitely helped. And even just uh, one annotation that's gonna 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 help her because this, this project starts with like zero zero data, and uh, also uh, mapping to the ontology classes. Um, yeah, it, it, my answer is, is pretty pretty same. Like even even one annotation, that is gonna uh, gonna help with uh, improvement uh, mapping uh, the question to the ontology. How can I say the machine learning tool? Because you can adapt to various um, amount of data. If you have zero amount of data, you just uh, need to find a way to go around of it. Um, so I hope the answer. Your, your question. Yes, thank you. And a last, last one. Uh, so once you have done this mapping of a question to an ontology class, would you need us uh, to validate manually this or some of this to make sure that uh, it's properly done by the algorithm? Yeah, I, I mean, definitely we need uh, manual validation uh, for, for testing the machine approach. Okay, so we will have to discuss this next step. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Great.
Thank you very much. A lot of thank you. Thank you to the presenter for your time for preparing this webinar and giving your great presentation and taking the question. And also thank you for those who have uh, logged in today. I will now hand it over to Elizabeth. So yeah, I also thank uh, our speakers and the, the, all the person connected. I think it was a great discussion. Uh, it shows a lot of interest for this uh, product that is not an easy piece to develop, but is really, really needed. We can feel that. So there, it raises a lot of interest and I hope we can call, keep that uh, dynamics uh, into the socio-economic working group. So please just join the working group of uh, Sunho. You send her a mail because I think we don't have a formal uh, subscription process for that. And you can let Sunho know that you would like to be part. In fact, Berta was uh, voluntarily proposing her her uh, exercise. So I think it was a great addition to the to the work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you all.